Canada becomes more multicultural each day, and as each community finds its place within Canadian society, some are struggling with their identity. Among Muslims in Canada, many say the majority moderate view isn't represented properly to the public. But some conservative followers of the faith don't even recognize that view as Islamic at all. As Joan Leishman reports, each side claims to be the Muslim voice, but one side feels its voice is being silenced. Brother Mahmoud, be careful what you draw. Inshallah, we will stop you if this nonsense does not cease. This is a warning to you and your newspaper. So maybe we should be inviting our Muslim community to ban and throw your newspaper out of their shops. They, they just sent me a message. We can kill you if you continue. In Canada's Muslim communities, that's what can happen if you dare speak out. You can face violence and intimidation. Behind the veil of Islam, a battle is raging between conservatives and moderates over who gets to speak for Muslims. I wouldn't really think that it is an organized campaign. Haida Mogisi is a longtime observer of the global debate within Islam at Toronto's York University. They have both religious and political justification for not tolerating difference and silencing dissenting voices. Also, there is this practice in Islam uh, of ordering good and preventing or forbidding bad. And this is something that um, basically allows Muslims to interfere in the affairs of fellow Muslims uh, if they think that um, they are um, abandoning their faith or if they are doing something that is against Islamic moral codes. Conservative Muslims hold a strict interpretation of Islam in which the Koran governs all aspects of life, including politics. Moderates look to a modern interpretation of their faith, including the separation of religion and politics, better suited, they say, for a modern multicultural country. The struggle is over these two visions and whose version of Islam gets to be heard. I believe I'm Muslim. Because I believe in the God and I believe in the finality of the Prophet Muhammad. If you say you are a Muslim, you are a Muslim, period. No good, no bad, no diluted, no nothing. Munir Purvez is part of a small but vocal group of moderate Muslims. I find, as a Muslim in Canada, that the Canadian secular nature of the Canadian society, where religion is separated from the state, is the paradise that we are all seeking for. So, so I'm a kind of Muslim who doesn't want that paradise to be affected or destroyed. Holding on to that paradise is forcing reformists to speak out on issues like Sharia law. And we will not let Sharia come to Canada. Thank you. That struggle boiled over three years ago, grabbing headlines here and around the world. Conservative Muslims petitioned the Ontario government to allow the Islamic code to be used for legally solving domestic disputes. Pervez supported the moderates who spoke out against that arguing Canada must have one legal system for everybody. And for that, he was called an apostate, the worst sin in Islam, being accused of rejecting his religion altogether. We have been maligned in writing. We've been, been called infidels. We've been called the agents of Zion. I have been followed in a mosque uh, very aggressively by people up till my car. I was very, very fearful of being beaten by this person who was a very well-known Islamic activist. This is the man Pervez says came after him, Mubin Sheikh. Agent of Zion, <laughs> I swear by Allah in the masjid, never did I utter those words. As to threatening him bodily, I swear by Allah, never have I threatened this guy bodily. You think I'm stupid? You may remember Mubin Sheikh as the informant who worked with CSIS. He helped them to arrest the Toronto 17 on terrorist charges last year. He's an ardent supporter of Sharia law and dismisses the opinions of moderates like Pervez. They are not representative of Islamic views. As simple as that. And they're being, and they're being propped up as though they are. But don't they have the right to hold whatever they, views they want? They have the right want? to hold whatever views they want. But to come on and say that this is the Islamic position is false. Secular church and state separation, remember, is not something that is inherent to Islam. As soon as I turned my face, uh, the person who was behind me 
He punched me very strongly. It was so strong because I fell down right away. Being a secular Muslim can be a dangerous thing. Mir Matavi was used to being silenced back home in Afghanistan. In fact, as a journalist there, he was facing a death sentence. But it was in this alleyway in Hamilton, Ontario, that he was beaten unconscious after speaking out publicly against the Taliban, Afghanistan's former Islamic government. It took seven stitches to close Mahdavi's wound. To him, the message was clear. They, they just sent me a message, a political well, message, and we can kill you if you continue. What do you think they were trying to stop you from doing? Uh, I mean, uh, uh, they're, they're trying to, to keep closed my mouth or, uh, I mean, stop my writing. The incident was reported to police, but so far, no arrests. Mir Matavi continues to write and speak out, and he says to receive threats. The letters say uh, you are not a Muslim, you are an uh, enemy uh, for Muslim community. If you continue, you would lose your life. Afghan community, 99% are Muslim, and a lot of this community are very fundamental Muslim. So when you are saying Mir is not a Muslim, the meaning is Mir doesn't belong to this community or the community has to throw out this person. And one of the ways of throwing out is killing. Many of the people that we talked to said that they had been accused of, of not being a good Muslim. I'm wondering if you can interpret for me what that means. According to um, the Quran, um, the people who deviate from the um, path of Islam have to be corrected, if possible, and if not possible, to be punished, sometimes by death. So it is a very, very dangerous accusation. And when some of these moderate Muslims with whom you have talked are threatened just by the uh, um, accusation or uh, implying that uh, they are not believers or they have deviated from the uh, true path of Islam, they have every reason to be uh, fearful for their lives. In her studies, Professor Mogisi has found most Muslims here are secular. They simply ignore sermons preaching hate. However, some people do take them seriously. Of course, we should always be concerned about the very tiny minority that take these um, words and warnings or threats very seriously, and they may consider it as their religious duties to act upon it. Many of the battles for the hearts and minds of Muslims are fought here in the mosques and here in community newspapers. As Tahir Gora found out, there's a less violent but equally effective way to censor moderate voices. In Pakistan, Gora ran a publishing company. When he arrived in Canada in 1999, he saw an opportunity. I looked around Pakistani language newspaper. I found that they were printing uh, stuff from back home. So I thought I should make a newspaper. We should carry stuff from Canadian issues. I thought I should initiate a few debates about open and free uh, discussions because I really felt lack of open discussions within Muslim communities. That was the inspiration for Watan, a weekly newspaper published mostly in Urdu. In these pages, Tahir Gora wrote about topics as diverse as the war in Chechnya to domestic violence. And it wasn't long before he started getting calls from mosques telling him to stop. But it was a simple announcement for a conference that got him into big trouble. It was by the Ahmadiyya, a tiny sect that's persecuted in Pakistan, where the Muslim majority don't consider them to be real Muslims at all. Goro says Mulana Asif Kazmi, the imam at this mosque, called him about the ad. He said, we'll warn you that don't do it again, otherwise...